Oh, where have you been? I've been waiting for you. Sorry, I'm a bit late, a few minutes late, just getting stuff ready, getting prepared. Got my laptop ready so I can look at comments. Oh, I say I've got my laptop ready. Actually, it's not quite ready. So um, let's see if we've got any comments. Oh yeah, we do. Hello. So we've got Lizzie Bean, we've got uh, Andreas, maybe the first to chat. Hello everyone. Hello Andreas, it's lovely to see you. We've got Scott here as well. And Brooke. Hello Brooke. Excited for this. Oh, thank you very much Brooke. Uh, I'm just going to get this on my laptop so that I can see the comments on here instead. Uh, but anyway, cheers. Uh, happy Thursday evening. I do have a little spot of vodka and coke in here. Cheers, Schleunter, Sante, all of that. We've got John. Hey, John. Ooh. Having to put the glass down on the carpet. It's a bit wobbly. I must get some sort of thing here to put stuff on. Right, um, let's get into the thing, uh, the, <laughs> the video thing, so I can see the comments. God, my internet's crap. I'm a bit worried that this might not stream too well because my, oh yeah, my power keeps going off, which I think is my problem because when I look out the window, everyone else has still got power and I flick it back on at the fuse box and then it can go off again. So if you just lose me, it's just my power. <laughs> um, I'll try and come back, but if not, uh, if it's, you know, if it's too late, it's too late. So that's <laughs> first disclaimer. Uh, and second disclaimer, you could lose me because the internet seems a bit shitty, uh, even if the power's on. So I don't know what that's all about. Uh, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Your channel, right, that's what we want, your channel. So, uh, <laughs> hello everyone. Let me know what your fragrance of the day or night is. Here we are, right, make sure the volume's off. Right, okay, stupid adverts. So let me know what you're wearing. Bless me, I've got a little uh, belch going on there. Um, I'm wearing one of the fragrances I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Drawn by is here, hello Claire. May the power be with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I see what you did there. All right, let's skip this. And uh, you can now pin message to the top of your live chat. Oh, that's a new, new feature on uh, YouTube here. So let's have a little quick check on who's here, first of all. So, oh, we've got Claire Smith. Dr. Smith is in the house. Hello, Claire. Um, I think I said hello to all of you. Um, Lizzie Bean is on the Jack and Coke. Cheers, Lizzie Bean. JC's here. Hey, JC, thank you very much. Gerda says hello to everyone. Hey, Gerda. Claire's been flicking. <laughs> flicking on the power, not flicking on the bean, but hold that thought. <laughs> right, uh, are we caught up? Uh, Gerda's wearing Born in Roma, Valentino Born in Roma. Uh, drawn by was wearing Pinot Sylvester's Fougere. Brooke, Givenchy Chypre Caressa. Never heard of that one, but it sounds lovely. Great name. Oh, Tara's here. Do you know what I was thinking about you, Tara? You've not posted a video for a while, so I know you've been very, very busy. I hope you're doing okay. Miss your beautiful face. Uh, John's wearing Chouette. Punishing myself because it's discontinued. I, I, I didn't know that. I'm trying to remember. Chouette is the... Is that the one I've got? I've got... Yeah. Is it from Bido, Amanda's? Yeah, I've got Chouette. Um, do you love it then, John? Uh, Lizzie sprayed Le Bleu. Bit random, fancy something comforting and vintage. It's, yeah, it's really nice. I love a bit of Le Bleu. And LV246, Molecule 1 plus Iris. It sounds nice. And Tiggy Girl's here as well. Hey, Tiggy Girl. Tiggy Girl. Right then. And Scott's wearing Tobacco Rose from Papillon. Amazing. Love that. 
okay right i think we're caught up so i'm going to tell you what i'm wearing and show you because it's new new to me it's a unicorn it's like a, it's it's like a unicorn times 10 <laughs> because i already had a version of this unicorn and it was a uni that was a unicorn in itself but this is now like unicorn extra uni this is extra unicorn -y fragrance that i'm wearing today and i will show you now so it's misty or le parfum but this is a 2013 bottle whereas the one that i had which is by far a better conditioned bottle but that's because it's newer this is a 2018, I believe. Is it 2018? I'm not sure. If it looks like an eight on the, I'm not sure if they was, were they still making it in 18? Anyway, it's a much newer variation. Uh, so that's my 40 mil of the newer version. And the difference is those, um, what are they called? Ribbons. The ribbons are different. We see the middle, the center of the ribbon is different and also then if you look to the outer edges of the ribbon the older version go the texture goes all the way to the edge whereas texture on this one has a border so that's how i knew when i saw it on ebay that this this one as an older one but I didn't check the batch code until I got it and as you can see there's not a lot there um, but it is a uh, it's got a three on the batch code so it's a 2013 version which means it was pre reformulation <laughs> so I've been chasing one of these for a while I found out about the difference in formulation from Floral Notes. Uh, you, most of you will know her from YouTube and Instagram, uh, Lily, who's a lovely, lovely lady. I've not spoken to her for a little while. I hope that she's okay. And she explained to me that there was a different version that I needed to look out for these features on the ribbon. And apparently the older version is a bit more vanilla-y and more ambery. And of course, I really felt like I needed to try it. So uh, I've got it and that's what I'm wearing today. I did a little side by side today when it first arrived on my hands. And I have to say they're pretty similar. And I certainly don't think anybody needs to worry about which version they're getting. If you can track one down uh, or if you used to love it, you used to have it and you can't find it and you don't know which version you used to have, don't worry too much about it. The, um, let's, let's do a spray of the oldest version. So the new to me one, <laughs> the new to me one, and that's the one I'm wearing up here versus the uh, newest version. Although they are both discontinued. I think I might've said that. Oh, missed. Here we go. Right. Let's get these out of the way before I drop them on the floor. I'm going to let those settle for a moment. Both of them are extra strong. Like the, I've now filled this whole space up massively with this fragrance. The notes, let me read you the notes, which I have prepared in my scent of the day notebook. Miss Diola Parfum was by Francois Demachy who we know has now actually left uh, Dior, but was their head, uh, head top honcho perfumer for several years. Uh, he created this in 2012. Notes are rose, mandarin, amber, patchouli, vanilla. So quite a simple note listing. Definitely has a vintage smell to both versions. They both have this kind of like sharp, almost hairspray. I'd say verging on aldehydic verging on that kind of like fizzy old-fashioned Chanel type aldehyde but not exactly but it does have it harks to that a little bit um, now who can remember what I sprayed where oh my god I think that is the newer version it's got more of that aldehydic type feel to it than the older version 
although it does have that. When I sprayed it earlier, I felt like the older version had almost a touch of like a, an, a liqueur type note, like a slightly boozy rich feel, which I didn't get from this current version or the newer version. I actually think the newer version is more beast mode and the older version is slightly less, but it's still big. They're both big fragrances. And I, I don't know if I'm just led by what I know, but I do feel like this older version is a little more on the ambery side, almost to a point of being t a teeny bit chocolatey. But really, they're so similar. I mean, I, I am scratching at, what's it called? <laughs> when, what's it called when you, um, oh, am I? Okay, my video, on my laptop, my video's gone. I don't know if you can still see me and hear me. So if you can still see me and hear me, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm talking to myself. Um, just waiting for one of you to comment. Okay, can still hear and see, see me. Thank you, Lizzie. Right, brilliant. Yeah, it must be just the laptops playing up a little bit. Um, what was I saying? The difference is quite minute and I would say maybe the older version is slightly more orangey in tone because I never really thought I got orange from it. But if you look for it, you can see it in both. But I do think the older version is just a teeny bit more on that ambery side and slightly less on that vintage sharp ness which is difficult to describe but just that thing that makes it a bit old-fashioned but ultimately yeah i didn't need it. it it was curiosity curiosity got me i did feel like i needed it and i'm really happy that i got that small amount so it wasn't that expensive so that's my first thing what i got there's not a lot here this isn't a whole um stream shall we say there's not a lot here but there's a few bits and i also want to talk about something that's up and coming that you may know about if you watched my instagram video today i'll say it now because i don't want to forget to mention it but let's quickly check your comments because i've lost the plot Tracy's here. Hey, Tracy. Hi, all. We're in La Via Belle Intense. You might be able to smell me from there. It's a gorgeous fragrance. I really think it's uh, very special. Something about La Via Belle Intense reminds me a tiny bit of Le Plus Beaujolais de Manvie in certain places. Like, it's not a dupe for it, but in certain places, it seems to have something that reminds me of it. So that's a good thing, in my opinion. Lisa, hi all. Sorry if I'm late. This is a treat. I'm drinking Merlot and Saint de la Mancera Velvet Vanilla with Montel Absolute Vanilla. Oh my God, you smell a like an edible walking vanilla cake treat. <laughs> Delicious. B, nuclear. <laughs> I uh, always remember, uh, well, I, I've, I've had both of those. I had um, a small one of the absolute vanilla and the compliments I got and the responses I got when I wore it in Cuba was out of this world the way that it lasted all day long out in the heat in the swimming pool in the sea swimming like nothing nothing would stop it and still I was getting compliments from people or or one time I just got a, co a comment from a man we were chatting to uh, there was a couple of couples that we made friends with and the guy in the group said can you what's that smell it smells like sweets <laughs> are there are sweets somewhere and I never told him but it was totally my perfume amazing so yeah absolute vanilla is is ridiculously nuclear but in a really good way John says Claire you're officially the mist your expert well um don't know about expert, definitely uh, very interested in the line. Um, but I have actually, got, I've got rid of quite a lot of my collection. I've only kept, I've got two versions of Mr. Your Cherie. I've got Mr. Your Extract, 
current mistyule and the mistyule of parfum so i did get rid of my uh, mistyule 2012 version and the next version along uh, which is that rich rose patchouli version because they weren't getting too much wear from me and i decided to try and narrow down my collection a little bit but I do, I do love, I love, yeah, and Liz, Lizzie says it, the Misty Your Bottles really are stunning. They truly are. There's something so aesthetically pleasing about them. Um, I'll put it down now. I don't know why I'm out of breath. It's a bit embarrassing. Um, they're just, they're so nicely made. I mean, look at the thickness of the glass here. I mean, this one obviously has the metallic plaque. The others don't. And they can go a bit manky, quite a lot of them. If you get them second hand, the lids are a bit like they don't fit very well. Uh, they're, you know, they're plastic, but they just, they're just so pretty. They're kind of like classy girly, aren't they? Yeah, totally. Right then, Channel 69 Reformulated says, evening everybody, evening to you too. Um, Elaine's here. Hey, Elaine. Oh, Elaine says, I clicked the like on the way in. Well, that's really kind of you. Thank you, Elaine. If anyone else feels like doing that, feel free. Brooke says, does anyone else get an irritated nose after sniffing too many samples in a row? I might need to take a bit of a break. I don't think I get an irritated nose. I, I think everything starts to smell the same. So if I go to London, I always smell way too much because I get I get distracted by all the shiny bottles and I start to sniff everything. And then before you know it, everything melts into one and it's like, oh yeah, I smelt that before, I smelt that before. But it's really just that I've just completely overwhelmed my schnozzer. Drawn by says, back from the kitchen with decaf. Hello, Monsieur Snow. Um, just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Tiger Girl says, loved your Instagram post today. Good idea. Thank you, Tiger Girl. I will come back to that in a little bit. Elaine says, loving your book. My son bought for me, writing down so many I want at some stage. I love fragrances at last. Thank you, Elaine. So Elaine's talking about the scent of the day book that I created. It's on Amazon. And um, it's not perfect. Like I'd like it to be a little more sturdy. But it's difficult, you don't actually know what it's going to look like because you just design it, you don't, um, you don't know how it's going to come out. But uh, yeah, it's, I like it, I like to, um, it kind of encourages you to remember to put the perfumer in there and stuff like that and the date and the weather that you wore the fragrance in because it can make a difference. Rich Mitch is here, hey Rich Mitch. Um, and Maddie is here as well, the lovely Maddie, vegan perfume girl. Tracy says, it's a great idea, saw your video, we've been loading up lorries going to Poland over the next few days with things needed to the point of being told no more donations until next week. That's amazing, thank you um, Tracy for sharing that and for doing that, that's brilliant. Um, hey Peter, Pete's here. Um, Claire says her bow keeps falling off of her um, Miss Dior. Uh, Lizzie says I picked up Miss Dior roses and roses cheap on eBay this week. The bottle isn't quite as plush as the Miss Dior bottles, but still glad I've got something similar. It's an easier scent for me. Yeah, that's very you, isn't it? I like kind of a pretty rose, fresh, fresh rose. And Maddie says love the book too. Thank you, Maddie. Um, Okay, right, take a breath, take a swig. It's so nice to see you all. It's been a little while. I was saying to Lizzie earlier, I've been a bit out of touch in general. I'm not great at being consistent at all with YouTube or Instagram or, or keeping in touch with my lovely fragrance friends. And that doesn't mean that I don't want to be in touch. It's just sometimes things get overwhelming, life gets in the way, all of that kind of stuff. And it is so nice to sit here and chat to you all and it's been a little while. So, 
What else have I got? Uh, Peter, happy to make some sort of contribution, Claire. Thank you, Peter. That's really kind of you. I'll um I'll chat to you later. Um, I've had some. I, I might as well talk about it now because we're talking about it. So if you didn't see my Instagram post, I um I appealed to brands or influencers, anyone that had something of of value to uh to put together for a prize uh, or a, a raffle prize bundle and all the proceeds will go to the red british red cross who are obviously doing amazing work for uh, the people of ukraine i don't want to talk about it too much actually what's happening because it makes me cry and it's even going to happen now which is really embarrassing um but i just wanted to focus on something good that we can do and i think you know making a donation that's the best thing that we can do from this distance so um I've appealed to brands to see if they're willing to supply something. It doesn't matter what, even if it's a sample set. And if you're a brand and you happen to be watching this now and you want to contribute something, and then the, uh, the contestants, <laughs> you guys, can pay, I'm not sure how much, I'm thinking about a fiver each, something like that, to be in the raffle and there'll be bundles of prizes. I've actually already got a really great a super generous selection of prizes already i'm not going to reveal too much just yet but really amazing stuff already and um obviously the bigger we make it and the more people know about it the more we can kind of like spread the word the more money we can raise and um, we can all feel like we're doing something you know we're, we're doing something to help um Okay, so yeah, that's that's really it. That's kind of um, the thing that I was going to talk about later. Uh, so for now, we are just in the. I'm, you know, it was just an idea that I put out there today, and it's definitely going to happen. So stick around, keep your eyes peeled on uh, my YouTube or my Instagram. I'll share it across all my platforms, my Facebook as well, and let you know how you can join in once I've got everything figured out. It's a, a slightly logistical um, conundrum to try and make it fair because I've got quite a few people that can uh, ship the price within the UK, less people who can ship worldwide. So I'm gonna have to put bundles together, but obviously one of them would be UK only. It's just like how do you how do I actually do the logistics of how do people do people enter for one of the bundles and, and specifically when they enter the prize draw? <laughs> if anyone's good at logistics and, and organising this kind of stuff, feel free to get in touch to help me out if you've got any ideas, clever ideas of how to actually organise it because obviously not all the uh, prize contributors can ship to everywhere in the world and I want to make sure everyone can be included and take part. So that is that. Um, ah, out of breath today. Uh, I just done three nights, I'm just gonna change the angle of this a little bit. I just done three night shifts. Um, I've, I've had very little sleep. I don't know what's going on with my sleeping. Uh, probably getting about three and a half hours. I only had about three and a half hours today. Yesterday was the same. Um, so it's been hard. <laughs> it's been really hard. Uh, I do 12 hour shifts. It's hard to get through a 12 hour night shift when you're tired. <laughs> Some of you will know that. Um, I do take, don't tell my bosses or anything, but I do take sneaky little 10 minute naps here and there. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a survival technique. If I didn't do that, I'd probably fall asleep on my keyboard. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow I've got, just going off completely off topic, tomorrow I've got a couple of um, appointments to go to, which I'm not looking forward to. Well, the first one, the dentist, 11am, uh, I've got to go to the dentist, and I've got a bridge. Um, I've been replacing, I've got these old fillings, or well, had these old fillings in my in the backs from my, when I was a kid. There was a filling in, uh, one or two in each, um, each part of the mouth got rid of all of them put uh white ones in there except up here that's the last one to go but there's also a missing tooth <laughs> so embarrassing my you know my 
my teeth hygiene probably wasn't the best when I was a kid. And so I've got a missing tooth and I'm going to have a bridge, whatever, I don't know how that works, what they're going to do, but they're going to remove the filling, put a bridge, fill in the gap, and uh, I think it's going to be horrendous. So, plus it's going to uh, massively <laughs> empty out my bank account, but I think you've got to look after your teeth, haven't you? So, <laughs> got to do that tomorrow. And then I've got acupuncture in the afternoon because I've been getting some pains. So, um, going to have that. I've had a few sessions. It seems to be helping. So that's what I've got on tomorrow. Um, Lisa says, be careful, please sleep. Uh, I will. I'm sure it's all going to catch up with me and I'm going to have like an amazing sleep tonight, hopefully. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me know what you're up to tomorrow because um, I've just bored you with my plans. Um, and then I'm going to show you what else I've got. So... Uh, it's a cheapie. It's one that I've seen hyped a little bit. I'm just cleaning the bottle. It's another, it's a secondhand one from eBay. So I am not uh, fussy about secondhand bottles. In fact, it suit me very well. Uh, you save a lot of money. And I really don't need full bottles of perfume because I've got quite a lot. So um, will, let me just show you what I've got. It's called Eternity Intense. So when I was younger, I used to wear Eternity back when, gosh, I was early 20s and I thought I was so bougie. And Eternity back then wasn't, Calvin Klein was not the cheap house that it is these days. Back when I was younger, it was minimum 50 pounds for a bottle of Eternity. And that was when you were probably earning half of what you're, uh, you would be equivalently earning today so not necessarily as, as an older person with more experience but if I was doing the same job that I was doing back then I'd probably be earning double but fra fragrances cost £50 a bottle or certainly the intense uh, the <laughs> eternity did and um, I always remember I'd go out to the pub back when you could smoke in the pub and if you go on a Friday night the whole pub was, the whole bar was packed and everyone was smoking all around you. And the stink of smoke would soak into my hair, my clothes, even my skin would smell of smoke. But I would wake up in the morning, probably slightly hungover, and I could still smell eternity because it was that strong. You could smell all the smoke as well, <laughs> but you could smell the perfume actually projecting. It was amazing. And I really did think, you know, I really thought I was, the, you know, I was the shit wearing my eternity. But um, I understand this is not that similar to the original eternity. I haven't smelled it at all yet. I wanted to do it live. So uh, let me know if you've tried this one and what you think of it. Scott says, fingers crossed for tomorrow, Claire. Hope all pain free. Thank you very much. Uh, miss them bars, to be honest, John. <laughs> Do you know what? There was a, it was a lot of fun. Things, things back then, I think booze was comparatively a lot cheaper. Or I don't know, maybe I just got bought a lot of drinks when I was younger. But generally speaking, uh, I do think booze was a lot cheaper. And there were more people in pubs. The, lo the local pub was a really fun place to be. And, you know, you, you, knew, all these, you knew all these people and you had fun and... Um, yeah, but life was more carefree back then, I suppose. Uh, Shaver Fon says, Smurfy Girly is wearing a designer set, Sacre Bleu. What brought on this temporary fit of insanity? Uh, thank you, Shaver Fon. I'm not wearing it yet. Actually, well, the Miss Dior is, actually, is also designer. Um, but yeah, I haven't tried the Eternity Intense yet. Um, Shay Buffon says, there was nothing more sensual than the smell of women's perfume mixed with cigarettes. That's why Marilyn Monroe and Liz Taylor look so hot in movies. It is kind of a hot look, isn't it? That sexy, like, um, all done up in a like, super sexy outfit and smoking a cigarette all, all nonchalantly or whatever. Um, John says, it was cheaper. I remember a pound a pint at college. Uh, Drawn by says, yeah, those smoky bars and clubs, Kuros and Jupe mixed up with Siggies. Yeah, the, the fellas would wear Fahrenheit, Cool Water, Issey Miyake, 
they were the main ones I think from my from my years. Right, I'm I'm revealing some forearm so we can spray this on. So this is an iris perfume, that's why I've I've gone for it. It's, it's described as smelling quite lip, lipsticky. Okay, so I'm not breathing in yet, I'm just gonna let that settle. Oh, I can smell it in the air. Oh, it's nice. This is not what I expected. It smells, oh, I can smell the iris. It smells fruity, it smells almost like cherry. Oh, very irisy, which I love, and kind of fruity, but I don't, there's no fruity notes here. I have got my notes. Oh, remind me to tell you about Narciso Rodriguez Poudre, so another designer fragrance I want to talk about in a minute. So I've got that on my wrist. Um, Eternity Intense. Launched in 2016, can't find the perfume, not on Fragrantica anyway. If anyone knows, let me know. Notes of Oris, watery notes, bergamot, iris, osmanthus. Maybe that's a fruitiness, which would give it more, but that would give it more of an apricotty. Yeah, I can see, yeah, I can see that. That's, that fruitiness is the osmanthus. Rose, vanilla, musk, sandalwood. Um... Peter says, pound a pint of snake bite and black good old days. Oh my God, I was so sick on a snake bite once. Never go back there, never. Claire says, students take drugs now and go to gyms, they don't drink as much. I do think the younger, I don't know about the drugs, I can't really comment on that, but I do think the youngsters these days are much more healthy in terms of I mean, when I go to the gym, mostly I just go for a nice little swim and a sit in, <laughs> sit in the steam room or the jacuzzi. But there's so many youngsters and really like looking after themselves and properly working out. And it, like, I think they're all inspired by Love Island. I mean, they literally all look like they, sh they could be on Love Island. <laughs> Does my head in. I was too busy <laughs> drinking down in pints and, and eating chips at the end of the night. I never really um, cultivated the Love Island body. Lizzie says, still remember buying diamond whites at the local club because they were dirt cheap. Yeah, and you could buy like a few, couldn't you? They'd be like four for a couple of quid or something. Yeah. Brooke says, drugs and gyms, an odd combo. I prefer alcohol, although as I get older, I don't get the same thrill from it. Yeah, it's, it's different, isn't it? When you're young, it's more like, yeah, let's, have, let's get drunk, let's have fun. And now it's like, God, I've had a shit day, I need a drink. I need to numb the pain. <laughs> Peter says, diamond white, rough as arseholes. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I was sick of that a few times. Let's be honest, I was sick of most alcohols when I was younger. Cider in particular. Drank a lot of cider. It didn't really agree with me, but it was cheap. It absolutely did make me sick a lot. Very bad. Very bad. Um, right, let's talk about this Eternity Intense. It's, it's pretty powdery. Lots of iris. How do we explain this iris? It's not particularly earthy or woody like it can be. Um, it's more, it is more like a lipstick and powder type scent a little fruitiness from the osmanthus. It's not coming off like a leather, it's definitely more of a powdery apricot type uh, fruitiness, but not too much, because I generally don't love osmanthus, especially if it goes leathery, and this isn't doing that at this time. It could almost be described as a bit suede-like, but that could be the iris, could be anything. <laughs> this is really nice. It's not gonna be for everyone because it is really powdery more powdery than I expected. It's almost got a velvet, yeah, it's got a suede texture. I like this. I'm pleasantly surprised. Watery notes. Not really. I, know, I was worried about the watery notes, but not particularly watery. I don't really get the bergamot. 
almost yeah like the i think now the iris is giving a, a lightly papery feel as well so it's, it's velvety suede like but also a bit papery and then we've got rose vanilla musk and sandalwood definitely musk um musk and iris they blend to, together like i would never say i can particularly smell one or the other it's just that combination I don't know if I smell rose. But I do smell a floral hint of something. You could tell there's a flower in here, but I wouldn't specifically have picked out rose. Almost a Dior Homme-like feel, you know, like slightly woody. I know we got sandalwood, so maybe that's what that is. I think if you really enjoy the Dior Homme line, you should check this out, and I'm not even joking. Don't worry about it being feminine. It's not really. As long as you're okay with quite heavy iris. It's really good. If a niche company bottled it and charged two or 300 pound, I wouldn't really argue. I wouldn't say it doesn't smell good enough. I'm really impressed with that. Um, Lizzie says aftershock was the only drink I'll never touch again. Aftershock. Is that some funny colour like green or something? Um, have I got another cat says so LV246? Yes, Aniela. She is sitting under a chair over there. So I've got, she's a British short hair. So she, she has the colouring of a Siamese-ish, but she's kind of grey, like a grey Siamese. Short hair, very chunky, loves her food. But I found out I've been underfeeding her because she's so chunky, I thought she was probably overweight. And I, I never used to feed Sweetie wet food. She just ate biscuits, that's all she ever wanted. She wouldn't touch anything else apart from crisps and chocolate. <laughs> but she didn't want wet food or, or meat or anything. So uh, wet food is a new thing to me, <laughs> or you know, you know, we fed cats when I was a child, wet food. And I've been giving her half a pouch at breakfast and half a pouch at dinner with biscuits. And I just, and I felt like she was always asking for food, but she's so chunky. And I thought she was just greedy. But um, I finally kind of, I was trying to Google how much I should feed her and stuff. And eventually I read the bottom of the uh, food box about pouches, about the pouches and how much to feed them. She's over four kilograms. It says cats over four kilograms should have three to four pouches a day. And no wonder she was always asking for food. I feel like the worst mother in the world. But she's not lost weight. She's, she's, she's a sizable chunk. But I do feel bad that she must have felt quite deprived for quite a while. So um, I am a bad mum. But she's... Now, so this morning she had a whole pouch with biscuits and then for dinner she's had a whole pouch with biscuits. And she's always got biscuits to graze on, so she's never actually without food, but she doesn't really like the biscuits that much, so she only eats them when she's really hungry. <laughs> but I do feel really bad. Um, now she is, uh, she's worked so far today, she's not begging for food all day long. So I think, um, yeah, I think we've sorted it now. Um, Shape of Fun says Eternity for Men was really good in its day it's not bad now but probably not as strong as it used to be yeah I remember that smelling that on the chaps and definitely one that I enjoyed uh, kibble isn't good for cats even the worst wet food is better than the best dry food I didn't know that I, um, Sweetie only had the Royal Canin one that was special, special for her breed uh, I know that it's not great because it's because they need moisture really, don't they? But um, Lizzie says, sending love to Angela. Cats are funny with food. They're all different. Yeah. John says, the boss gets four halves a day and biscuits. Okay, so that's about the same then that I, I've given her today. So yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> Kibble's full of carbohydrates. Wet food is always much better. Okay. 
chunky means more to love. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's only because I worry about her health. I would, I would love her to be massive, but um, I just want her to be healthy. So that's why I've been sort of conscious of, of not overfeeding her, but I've obviously taken it too far. Um, Scott says, Tommy won't eat wet food. Yeah, I have to say, um, I really don't like wet food myself. Not that I eat it, but I don't like dealing in it. It smells, doesn't it? Um, and it attracts flies and stuff like that. I mean, Sweetie was so low maintenance, I didn't even realise how low maintenance she was because I just literally had to pop some biscuits in a bowl. And if the biscuits got low, pop a few more. She never had a specific feeding time. So it was just easy. <laughs> Annula's uh, quite different. <laughs> she wakes me up three in the morning for food. She's really heavy and she, um, you know, walks all over you with a big heavy feet. Um, yeah, but she's lovely. She's very sweet. Lizzie says, I only give my cats one half a sachet a day and they always have biscuits. They're all healthy and strong, but mine are moggies. Pedigrees are different. <laughs> Brooke says, you're a great mum. You want her healthy. Thank you, Brooke. I'm a great mum who, who made a mistake, but um, hopefully, well, she seems to have forgiven me. Cats, cats will let you know what they want half the time, but I'm not a fan of wet food. My vet says it's like giving them curry and that biscuits are better, but info can be flick, conflicting so often. I know that the, um, I think it's like the Go Cat, the cheap biscuits are considered like junk food, the junk food of, of pet food. Uh, I thought that the ones that I used to give Sweetie were, they were recommended by the breeder. So that's what I went with. But yeah, I guess everyone must, should do their own research. <laughs> do your own research when you get a cat um right have i got anything else yeah i was going to tell you about oh no i've got one more one more new thing to show you and it's sent to me by the brand uh it's and perfumes and it's a new one called far f-a-r i've got this little 10 mil here and spray it I have sprayed this one already. It is Smurfy Girl approved. I'll spray it up here. So I'm gonna read you the notes. I've got them on the laptop. Ooh. Oh yeah, it really, basically it smells like a, a citrusy cheesecake, like a lemon and lime cheesecake. Instantly, that's what I'm smelling in the air, lemon and lime cheesecake even to the point of that, you know how the cheese, um, the cheesy stuff has that tartness to it. It's even got that, you know, that kind of like squeaky, you know how cheesecake, even if it's not a citrusy cheesecake, even if it's a vanilla cheesecake, has a little bit of an acidity to it, doesn't it? A bit like um, yogurt does. So it's got that, it's got this, um, this slight acidity to it, as well as citrus notes which are I know yuzu is one of them uh, let's have a look yeah, where are the notes so what they uh, what and do is they work with suppliers of the materials so they, they, they're obviously fair trade um, there's sustainability vegan cruelty free all of that good stuff that we should all be caring about and I can't find the notes but I do remember there's labdanum there's some ambery type notes in here I think there's different resins and to me it's, it's almost uh, when it dries down a little bit it goes a little caramelly but not to the degree of smelling like a synthetic caramel note that you can smell in modern sort of ladies perfumes it's more of a a natural it's almost like the resins caramelize i think i know there's definitely yuzu it feels like there's probably lime and it does really smell like a lemon and lime cheesecake mm. it is really good i think if you like a citrus gourmand it's really nice. 
it does smell lush like so the brand owner and perfumer Simon Constantine was uh, part of Lush. He was part of the, fam the founding family of, um, of Lush, the business, um, the, you know, the high street shop that we all know. And he was the perfumer at Lush and he's created quite a lot of the perfumes for Lush. And you can tell, I mean, this feels a bit like a Lush perfume, basically. It has that rawness. Lush use a lot of naturals, way more than uh, designer perfumes, tons of tons of natural tons of expensive naturals but sometimes they can be a little raw a little you know because there's there's so much naturals compared to how much synthetics they generally lush never used many synthetics at all they didn't like them so lush perfumes can smell a little raw and raw and uncut um i wouldn't say that this smells too raw it doesn't smell badly blended i'm not saying that but it does have that kind of like really natural, you know, you can tell there's natural oils in here, 100%. Yeah, to me, it's really limey. I'm, I'm not quite, I know I've smelled a lot of perfumes with yuzu in them, however, I, I still don't feel like I know what yuzu smells like isolated. So I can't really say I smell the yuzu because that would be a lie. Uh, but it smells really limey, really zesty, really tart. I don't think John would like this one because John doesn't really like sharp, tart citruses. Um, let's have a look, see, where's my, where's my comments? Here we are. Lizzie says, labdenum is so delicious. I've been loving that in fragrance lately. Yeah, I really enjoy labdenum. It's got this like really sticky sweetness to it. It's not like synthetically sweet of course it it just has this light sweetness and it's really sticky and, and lovely um, drawn by says i got the Anne sample set in bournemouth of all places just before christmas still sussing them out elaine says lush never appealed to me i think the fragrance is too strong outside the shop yeah <laughs> you, you walk you don't have to even get close to a lush shop to smell the scent of lush but i actually quite enjoy it Although, if you go into a Lush shop to try and smell their perfumes, it's challenging because the environment is so strong in smell that you really need to spray them onto the card and then walk outside up the street quite a way. <laughs> and once you can no longer smell the Lush shop, then smell the perfumes. A top tip there. <laughs> ah, John says, you know what, Claire? I did enjoy this one. I think it's because it's lime. Okay, I thought you were reverse to all citrus, but you're okay with lime. Do you get a cheesecakey feel from it? Let's find out what John thinks about this one. Yeah, it is really lushy. It's lushy. You can just feel underneath that the, the, those sort of caramelized resins are gonna come through but uh, when you first spray it it's mostly just this citrus citrus which is very limey and it's sort of like creamy ish cheesecakey like frosting or frosting what do you, you know cheese you know what goes on cheese the main ingredient of a cheesecake uh, <laughs> the cheese stuff i'm no chef I, I don't quite know what it's called but um yeah very cheesecake says john some people might find it a little bit cleaner, like household cleaner. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it is quite strong in the citruses and you do find some products that have lime, lemon in them. And it might be that association for some people. So it is very much that kind of like natural... Uh, very zesty, very natural citrus. This is not um, this is not a Guerlain bergamot. No, you know it is very much a, a, a essential oil of of lime and, and lemon kind of type scent. But it's, so it's refreshing, but it is gourmand. It's got this sweeter, richer note sitting underneath. Quite interesting. <laughs> um.
Lizzie is literally making cheesecake as we speak. Oh my God, what flavour? Andrea says, I like my Lush fragrances chunky. <laughs> Uh, Tracy says, in the best possible way, loved Maria Collett's video on it. Yes, I saw that. Oh, that was really funny. Um, she was making fun of how we all say, oh, it smells like, it smells like funky feet. You know, when you haven't washed your feet for five days and, and then you take, you, you're wearing the same socks and then you take your socks off and you hold it up to your nose and it smells like really, really cheesy but in the best possible way. <laughs> Just taking the mickey about how, how we all kind of do that, how we talk about funky smells and then say it, but in the best possible way. Um, right, a little swig of drink. I probably will disappear in a minute because bladder's, bladder's asking to be, <laughs> to be taken upstairs. Uh, right, what else were I going to do? Oh, right, final fragrance we're going to talk about is Narciso Poudre. Who's tried it? I'm a bit late to the party. I'm a little bit late to the party. Someone kindly sent me a sample ages ago, and I, I, I honestly don't know who it was. <laughs> um, and I filed it and then forgot about it. I might have tried it at the time, but not paid too much attention. Filed it forgot about it because I've got too many samples and then a couple of people talked about it here and there in just generally in fragrance world you know and I thought I'd quite like to try that I think I've tried it but I'd like to try it again next time I see it in the shop I'm going to smell it then I was looking through my sample drawer and found a sample of it not looking for it I was looking for something else so uh, I got it out I did a little spray I was like yeah this is quite nice I forgot about it and then I was rooting through my samples again probably looking for something else today and I found a little sample of Narciso Poudre and I thought I'm going to try that out on this wrist right now properly and so I emptied the last of the little bit of sample that was left on here and I probably sprayed it about where are we now oh nearly 10 probably sprayed it oh, I met my friend for a carvery today at half past four so I must have sprayed it around about 3 p.m. ish. So it's, it's, it's doing really well. It's just fading now. Let me give you the notes. Let me know if you tried it. Uh, you might have done already. <laughs> so the perfume is Orion, Gu Orion Guichard, who you now uh, know has his own brand, um, Matier Premier. Released in 2016. Notes of jasmine, Bulgarian rose, orange blossom, musk, of course, it's Narciso Rodriguez, cumarin, vetiver, cedar, patchouli. So had I just read the notes, I wouldn't expect to really like it because I think that it would be too woody for me with all of those, like vetiver, cedar and patchouli. That says to me that's going to have quite a woody base. Also, I'm sure there's vanilla in here. This smells vanilla -y to me, quite vanilla -y actually. So I'm surprised there's no vanilla listed, but I would stake my life that there is vanilla in here. Um, let me... Uh, right, say my chat is disconnected. Are we all still here? Are you getting me? Am I talking to myself? I'm just reloading the chat. I hope you can still see me. Um, I think you can. Elaine says Woody Bass is one of my faves. And right, here we go. I've, the chat's now back. Okay, Scott can hear me. Good, thank you. <laughs> um, right then. Elaine says I, would, I so would love to try this one. Claire says yes, I have that one. Pippi Stitch is here. Hello Poopy Stitch. Uh, talking about food, complete cat and dog food, wet or dry, easy peasy, animal friendly, animals food. Okay, Benevo. Okay, that's a company, I guess. Benevo, Benevo. Um, right. Okay, so uh, let's talk about how this smells. It's quite sweet, but not too sweet in my opinion. So it does smell like there's vanilla in here. 
I can tell it's floral, but if you ask me to guess what the florals were, I don't think I'd necessarily know that there was rose and jasmine. I'd almost guess at more like a tiare flower or a, um, a frangipani because it sort of reminds me of the floral in the ombre, uh, Narciso ombre, which has a frangipani note. So it has like, a, to me, a slightly heady white floral, but a very muted at the same time. Lots and lots of that gorgeous musk, but it's mixed with vanilla to me. It definitely smells vanilla. It's very cloud-like. Picture a cloud, a big, fat, fluffy white cloud. Picture that cloud and then just add a, a muted white floral note. And... I don't know. I, it's hard to describe it much more than that uh, in terms of do I really pick up any of these notes? Coumarin. Coumarin is a der derivative, derivative of tonka. Um, so it can smell slightly almondy and slightly sweet. Would I pick it out? No. Um, orange blossom? Would I pick it out? No. <laughs> Vetiver, cedar, patchouli, I would never necessarily pick them out. I think if anything, cedar, because cedar is such a clean, um, clean and um, has this texture to it. It's very finely milled, uh, fine, almost like a finely milled powder, but a clean wood. But really, that's a very, very, very understated part of the fragrance. And the fragrance is much more about, to me, it's a vanilla fluffy musk cloud really, with this hint of a white floral. But yeah, um, I really like it. So I might be in the market for a bottle. I might actually buy myself a designer perfume. This could be the Narciso for me because I actually really like Narciso fragrances. I think that their musk accords are beautiful. I, 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 am, a, I am a musk whore, I admit this, uh, Often these days, I'm definitely really, really into musk lately. Like that's the big thing that I'm into. But I do find the other, I really like the ambre, but not quite to the point that I need to buy it. I do find the other Narcissos, the actual floral accords are just a bit too much for me. Um, I guess if they, if they muted the florals and upped the musk and the vanilla or, or whatever else is in there, I'd probably get on with them better, but I find the florals just a tiny bit sharp or, or too strong for my taste. But this one is perfection. Really easy to wear. Like people would want to hug you if you wear Narciso Poudre, I think. Claire says, this is my comfort in teaching fragrance when I'm worried that I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, I need to try rolling in love again. I've still got your sample and I did actually spray it really recently and I think I don't love the opening. I think the, the, the tuberose is just a bit much, but the dry down's perfection. The dry down's amazing, but it's just a bit much for me at the opening. Um, yeah. Okay. I think I've, um, I think I'm done, but just, yeah, absolutely loving Narciso Poudre. Might act, might actually add one to my collection at some point, but it's not urgent. You know, I I really love a lot of my the fragrances I've got, and I'm kind of careful about adding too much, especially more expensive stuff. But um, I know I just added a blind buy of Eternity and the Eternity Intent. Hmm, I can smell more of the Elf's Memphis now. It's coming through. It might be the eternity intense, might be a little cloying, like a little bit too thick with the powder. It's like a layer of suede with this thick pile of makeup powder on top. And not a lot of um, room to breathe, really. It's really nice. But I'm not sure I'll actually reach for it a lot. But I do like it. 
Anyhow, I'm going to leave it there because I've got to go upstairs and do what my bladder wants me to do. Um, thank you so much for watching. Scratch my head. That's better. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed chatting with you all. Stay tuned. Don't forget, I'll be doing the, the raffle thing. Uh, it will be coming up hopefully in the next week or so. Uh, I, I need to do it quickly, actually. We need to um, get as much money together as we can, as quickly as we can, so we can help our friends in the Ukraine. Say no more because I'll get upset. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And I will see you all hopefully soon. Mwah.